He is a Pulitzer Prize winner. He is the business writer for the LA Times. You can read him across the world. And he is Michael Hiltzik, everybody. I love my Hiltzik. I've never seen his office before, although I will confess, I did get a glimpse of it on Nikki's show. He was over on Nikki's show a couple of weeks ago. And um, it is impressive, Michael, I will say. I, I will grant deal. you that. Yeah. You know, you, you can tell an author by his desk, so. You can? You, you can? You feel you were, you were able to? <laughs> well, I like to think that I can, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, Hiltzik, I'm going to start with this. Where is the Pulitzer, pal? Do you have it there? Is it in the uh, immediate area, or do you have it a showcase perhaps in another part of the house? No, I think it's... Um, it's like, where's Waldo? <laughs> it's behind me somewhere. Um, I love that. He doesn't even know where the Pulitzer <laughs> Prize is. He doesn't know where his Pulitzer Prize is. Come on. <laughs> it's right there Maybe. next to my seventh grade uh, trophies. And- <laughs> Maybe Trump's Don't team can find it. Pull that false there. modesty on yeah, me. I'll, I'll have them come uh, down and look. Yeah. Well, next time I want to see it. I'd like to see the Pulitzer Prize, but this time I'll All let right. you well, skate. Next, yeah. next time I'll, I'll, I'll dig it up and drag it out. I mean, there's something. There's a globe. <laughs> see, there's a sort of a globe. That's, that's something. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Um, well... You don't have any merch, do you? How about that, pal? I win the brag off when it comes to merch. Look at all this. It looks. This looks like uh, I'm. You know, my show's yeah, being done from an apartment store. Yeah. Um. And by the yeah, way, this swag. yeah yeah this um, banner behind me has just been auctioned off. The audience has stepped up, and we are um, we were giving it to a guy named Joe Box, but. Um, he didn't uh, come through with the money, and uh, so now we're giving it to the backup. Joe trader. Box and Little Anthony. Yeah, I guess maybe he's hanging with Little Anthony, and so uh, Joe Box is a fraud. We found out, or there oh, might no. be extenuate might be extenuating circumstances. Yeah. So Kevin will isn't it Kevin who's going to get it? Kevin Hobbs. Yeah, yeah, Kevin Hobbs. So come on, how about a little something for Kevin Hobbs? All right, no, now let's get it. Yeah, go ahead. Was Joe Box going to pay in dollars or Bitcoin or? Uh, <laughs> well, it's Mark uh, Bell. Yeah, but it was likely a cash deal knowing Joe yeah, Box. Or, Joe yeah. Box and then, Little yeah, Anthony. Right, exactly. Hey. hey, listen, Mark, why is it always about the money with you? Come on, you know I'm good for it. Let me let me see the banner. So Hiltzik's not a fan of the crypto. He really feels as though it's a um it's a scam. I think you would you'd say that, right? Yeah. It is a scam. It's always been a scam. Uh it's basically just a a con game and uh we see and i've been writing about it it looks like my my first article about bitcoin ran in 2013 and i uh, i've always predicted that it was going to come to nothing but if you'd actually bought bitcoin in 2013 when you wrote that article and you then sold it in 2020 you would have made some serious loot am i right michael hiltzik well some people would have, but the 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 community of Bitcoin owners who were able to get in at that stage and stay in is very small, and that's something that people don't understand about crypto is that uh, there's a small community of big whales, you know, big players, and then there's everybody else who gets sucked into it by commercials on uh, the Super Bowl, and they buy at the top. Uh, and then, you know, they wake up one day and they discover that they've got about, you know, 20% of what they started with. Um, so they're the ones who are, you know, the average investor is being taken to the woodshed. But let me, let me go through the process of being, let me just quickly, and I I won't spend much time. I want to move on to a couple other things, but the, the process of being taken to the woodshed or the scam or whatever, uh, somebody's cashing out. And so you're saying the the cashing out process leaves a lot of people just holding the bag. Uh, who is getting rich then? Well, there's a whole variety of ways in which, um, you know, investors have been, you know, killed here. Um, there, the, you know, the conventional market uh, risk is you buy in, uh, you buy from somebody, you know, for, let's t- just take Bitcoin, uh, which peaked at about $60,000 per coin. 
and at some point you sell because it's gone down and then somebody who's on the inside has bought it from you but uh, essentially um, you know profited from the you know from the difference you've lost money uh, but and you've lost it to these people who bought from you at a lower price then there's a whole panoply a whole pageant of cons that uh, that have we've seen including the, the latest one uh, FTX where uh, you know you uh, park your crypto with this broker that presented itself as you know the one honest broker that you know was protecting your money and you know it was backed up uh, like it was a real bank and then you discover that they've taken your money and spent it on themselves or they've invested it on other crypto uh, investments that turned out to be worth nothing and it's all gone so you know who profited well you know it's the, the insiders who pocketed payouts from this firm um you know some yeah, of which uh, was was funded by people who thought their their money was safe uh panoply is a ding word you're right about that everybody uh i did want to say though that you know michael it's what's confusing is that many legitimate minds if i can sort of just make up a generic term i'm talking about uh, the Morgan Stanleys of the world, these big uh, investment organizations that are populated by people, I would presume, with you know sort of the same business acumen that you'd find uh, with top Wall Street people or top you know investors. They actually developed arms of their company to help in investment in crypto. Doesn't that suggest that there's some kind of legitimacy to it? Well, no. <laughs> Okay. Uh, in a word, you know, what, what was going on here is that, you know, the, uh, these investment firms, you know, uh, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, they were not investing for themselves. They weren't putting their own money into this. Um, you know, Jamie Dimon, who's the chairman and CEO of JP Morgan Chase, constantly said, this is just nonsense. Um, but what these firms were doing is they were getting queries you know they were they were getting pressure from their clients who said gee we hear a lot about crypto you know can't you give us a way to put our money into crypto so they say yeah sure you know that's we're in the business of serving the clientele so they would set up funds or uh, uh in investment mutual funds what have you you're saying they were meeting demand they were in, meeting but demand. they weren't doing it for themselves no i get it they were they, meeting sorry? demand and they were not recommending yeah, and, to their and, clients, you know, and they were sort of grinning, you know, behind their hands, you know, and saying, "This idiot, <laughs> he wants to be in crypto, so let's, you know, let him be in crypto." Well, there was a robust demand for it, and you know, there was a real market for it, and there is also, in you know, crypto is a big term that affects a. Uh, yeah, under it, under the umbrella of crypto, there are a lot of different coins and uh, tokens and. Um, the fact that, for example, Bitcoin, which is just one of the coins, and then what, I, I really do want to move on. We'll try to move on to something else, but I just think it's intriguing to talk with you about this because I you were on the sh another show, you were on Nikki's show the other day, and I was um, thinking, God, I wish I was in there talking to Hiltzik about this. Um, although you guys covered a lot of territory, the Bitcoin has value in certain transactional ways, Michael Hiltzik. It has, over the last few years, been adopted well, tran uh, transactionally. Transactionally, yes, it has. Uh, it, it has, but but the bottom line is that these, these things don't have any real value. It's, they're Pump just and dump. Valuable <clears throat> as, yeah, well, you know, what you can get the next, um, you know, fool to buy them from you at, uh, they don't have any intrinsic value. They don't give you the opportunity to do anything with your money or your assets that you can't do, in fact, much more easily with dollars. Um, and that's the scam that underlies all this, is that the, the Bitcoin and the crypto promoters say, you know, we're doing something that you can't do um, through, you know, your normal bank or your normal brokerage. And the, and the, uh, what we allow you to do is better for you than working through a bank. But it turns out, if you really look, it's not better for you. It's not good for the consumers. 
uh, all of the supposed virtues that they talk about are in fact uh, detriments to the way people are need to manage their money. So it's it's really you know all of these things are sooner or later going to go to zero. Bitcoin, you know, may last a little bit longer because it's the best known and at this point the most traded, but it also is not worth anything uh, really in the market except in its own market. Uh, but you know, yeah, yeah, it, right. It's it, uh, the, the, what I what I think of is I think of um, the NFT market and how you must. It, it, that's the only way you can buy an NFT is with crypto. Now you would say you don't want to buy an NFT. <laughs> I don't know why anybody wants an NFT. I mean, they, they, you know, these things were a joke from the get go, and. You know, we've seen in the NFT market, you know, we've seen, you know, people who plunged into it and paid a million dollars for an NFT. And then when they went to sell it, somebody offered them, you know, a couple of thousand. So, yeah, so, I, I mean, um, I don't know. I think I, the I, NFTs I, are over I, already. And, um, I see. You know, um, and, 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 and we can really get to um, other stuff. But I do see a again a robust demand still like they just finished this art basil in miami and there's a whole their whole galleries d devoted to this to the nft market from an art standpoint it's relevant now again outside looking in it seems crazy like you can almost barely understand it but there are in this web 3 development which is on the blockchain if you will um there are a lot of nooks and crannies that may have some legitimacy. I mean, you would say no, I and mean, they're certainly not traditional investments. But you'd say they're worse than that. Well, they're not traditional investments, and you know the the sort of um, you know the rear guard uh, action is well, maybe these individual crypto tokens or cryptocurrencies are aren't worth much, but the blockchain technology is great. Uh, except that if you then uh, look at well, what is what has anybody done with blockchain? you find out that the answer is nothing. There was a very interesting uh, post by a former um, executive at Amazon who was one of the people in charge of Amazon Web Services, which which is a huge part of Amazon. It's the, the division they've got that serves the cloud, you know, and they've got a lot of clients. And their CEO went to them, you know, the IT guys and said, you know, I'm getting a lot of questions from our clients at AWS who want to know about blockchain. You know, so the IT guy said, well, all right, we'll go and check it out. And they did a tour and they talked to blockchain promoters all over the place. And they came back to the CEO and said, look, if you want to sell your clients some sort of blockchain enabled system, we can design it for you. But we got to tell you, it's not going to do anything for your clients that they can't do through normal uh you know, normal systems. So it's sort of a waste. But if they want it, yeah, you know, we could give you something that you can sell. But right. It's, it's not worth anything. Uh, I want to move on. Uh, I want to move on to something that I thought was a glaring, a glaring thing you put in the spotlight in a column. Uh, your columns: the child tax credit is our greatest anti-poverty program. Why is Congress letting it wither? Remind us what the child tax credit is, and then explain the situation, please. Oh, sure. The, the child tax credit is a, a it's a financial assistance program that's actually been around since the 1990s. Um, generally, it provided two thousand dollars to families with children, uh, two thousand dollars a year, um, and that was you know, money that they could uh, basically get back as a tax refund to the extent that they had taxes to pay. Um, during the pandemic, um, uh, the Biden administration enhanced it. They passed a, a law that said, we're going to raise it to $3,000 um, per family and $3,600 if you've got a child uh, under the age of six. And we're going to pay it out to you every month for, for the last six months of 2021. And then we'll give you the rest of it as a lump sum when you file your taxes. They also made it fully refundable, which means that families would get that even if they didn't owe any taxes. So this turned out to be just a, a great anti-poverty program. And we saw that um, uh, 
uh, we still have Somebody families with children. We still Somebody's have really trying poverty. to get a hold of Michael Hilsick. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, they're going to have to wait. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, child poverty just plummeted when that program, that enhancement was in place by, by many, many percentage points. Um, 3.7 million children in the United States were kept out of poverty or brought out of poverty in that six month period. It's an incredible result. Um, and it's documented. I mean, there's no question about, it. well, the enhancements expired uh, at the end of 2021, and there's been pressure from the administration to put them back and make them permanent ever since. And Congress just will not pass this. Um, for, for the longest time, it was Joe Manchin, the senator from West Virginia, who said, well, it's inflationary. It causes inflation. And uh, the enhancements took away the incentives for people to work. Well, none of that really held any water. I mean, this is not enough money going out to lower income families that ha had any impact on inflation. We know that work requirements in these programs don't work. They don't get jobs. Uh, they basically punish wor working people who, who sort of can't, you know, meet the applications. Um, you know, we saw a lot of work requirements that were attached to Medicaid by in Republican states. They have just people off Medicaid and not doing anything employment. So, so basically, that's where we are. We're back to two thousand dollars a year. We've got work requirements. Uh, more money goes to families that have higher earnings than go to families that have lower earnings. It makes no sense whatsoever. And, and, and you're saying it became a political. It became a political hot potato. That's the reason that that they couldn't, in, essentially. Uh, 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 create a system by which the the increased child tax credit under the Biden administration that was started during COVID, et cetera, um, that they couldn't yeah, do well, that because it, was, it became well, a political because, problem. Well, because Republicans were all against it. And then you had Manchin when he actually had power, which he's going to lose, you know, come January when the Senate goes to 51, 49 Democrats, no one's going to care what Joe Manchin thinks anymore because he's not going to be able to block anything. But right. this is their last chance during this lame duck session. Exactly. The exactly. House is still in the hands of, of Democrats. And There's the not going to be anything to block once uh, once the House is taken over by the GOP. I mean, sadly, that's just the case. Right. This, this it, is the last chance to get this uh, made permanent. And, but it's a, and it, it, you know, it's not Congress even, has to take it up, and it doesn't look like they're. No, no. They're not taking up a lot of things that that I'd like to see them take up in this lame duck session. So uh, I want to get to Musk. I want to get to the Twitter situation. I, I have much to talk t with you about. Can you visit us next week? Uh, go return that call right now. Yeah, sure. And then, um, yeah, that would be great. We, you yeah, know, I'm sure it was a you know a telemarketer. So. Yeah. But somebody yeah, wanna, I'll somebody want to sell you some crypto? Maybe. Yeah. Um, no, you're right. Hiltzik, no, you know, sure there'll be more to talk about. about Musk, so. <laughs> oh, that's for damn sure. So uh, you can read Michael Hiltzik in the L.A. Times, find him online, just Hiltzik. And you can find him, of course, uh, on Twitter for the moment at Hiltzik M at Hiltzik M. You see it there on the screen. And I want to see that Pulitzer next time. Damn it. I want to know the location. I want to see it. <laughs> All right. Show and tell with the Pulitzer no, next time. All right. Michael Hilsick, everybody. Thanks, right. Michael Hilsick. Great team.